Hello everyone, today we are going to be going over some lead code today, and today we are, will be focusing on search in rotated sorted array. Now to give a rundown of the whole question of what we're facing is that uh, we are given an integer array of nums sorted in ascending order with distinct values. Prior to being passed to your function, nums is possibly rotated in an unknown pivot of k, such that the result array is the following over here, nums k, nums k plus 1, nums uh, n minus 1, num 0, etc. The point is, it's rotated at 0 indexed. For example, um, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7 might be rotated at pivot 3 and become 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, 2. Given the array nums after the possible rotation and an integer target, return the index of target if it is in nums or uh, negative 1 if it's not in nums. All right, so based on our questions, what we have, we have to ask ourselves what the input's going to be, what data structure slash algorithm technique to use, what to do with the data, and what our output's going to be. So we already know what the output is. We need to return the index of target if it is nums or negative 1 if it is nums. So we already know exactly what we have to do. We have to return negative 1. And then what we need to do for our input <coughs> nums with a target as specified in our parameters up here, nums, and then we have target. We also need to uh, write this algorithm in O log in time complexity. And overall, just from looking from the example, we have nums equal to 4567012 with a target of 0. And our output is 4. What we need to do is that we need to reflect the relationship of the following examples, example 1, 2, and 3, to have our input reflect our output. So if we have a target of 0 already started, it's actually located right here. So arrays start at 0 by principle. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The target is 0. Uh, right over here, and it's located right over here. So it's at index 4, which we output 4. And if um, if the target is not located in the array, we're going to have to return negative 1, somewhere in the case of right here, and over here, and here. So, we're, so I'm going to introduce you folks to a technique called binary search, where in it, it's more of a divide and conquer method, where we have three variables of the middle, low, and high end. And the way how we are going to figure out between the two is that with binary search, the principle is, uh, the principle is say for example you have a, uh, a row of cards. That's the best way of describing it. And you are supposed to find your given target. You have a value you need to find of one. Now you don't know where one is already located because it's already been shuffled in the amount of cards. But what you can do is that if you have your following uh, numbers already taken into consideration for the array, you can actually find where the middle is going to be located. And when you find where the middle is, you can actually get rid of the other stack of cards and even right here and here to ultimately find the card you're looking for. And this type of complexity runs O log n time. And the way how the variables need to be made is that middle is made with the following. So people would typically think it will be high minus low divided by two since that's just by nature how to get the average. But really because we need, we're need we working in C++ and to prevent an overflow, we have to add this plus low in the case of if we have an extreme uh, variable that has a value that's really low or a value that's really high. And our low, we're going to initialize it as zero and then a high, uh, high value is going to be um, nums.size minus one because we're looking at the very last element inside of the array. And so what we can do just based by on principle, we have to first initialize our variables to, um, we need to expand upon the relationships between our variables, which will mean to a uh, while low is going to be less than or equal to high. Uh, 
we need to, I'm going to redeclare our middle variable here. Or it doesn't matter if you put it inside or outside the loop, uh, you can declare it where in particular, that should be fine. But since we are working inside of a while loop and that we have an array of nums, uh, what we need to do is that we need to check the edge cases if the target is middle, is in the middle. We're going to return our target, <coughs> which will be our middle. If the target is on the left, we are going to shift our middle to the left because really what we need to do is that we are going to be this is where we will be returning our target ultimately since we declared it as a middle and then what we will do if the target is on the right we will shift to our middle which is on the right. So do, I'm going to f now write the code out just to be able to further explain at the same time. So we're going to first initialize our variables. Int low is going to be zero. Int high is going to be nums.size minus one. And then I will go in this while loop. Low is less than equal to high, which will then be once we initialize our mid, which will be low plus low, uh, high minus low, divided by two, we will then, uh, if the nums of mid is going to be equal to the target value, we are then going to return our mid. And since we already have our mid already set in place, uh, I will then have this variable for our left. And then for our right. All right. And then we're going to have some further edge cases as well to expand upon. Over here. So this will be in the case where the nums of mid is going to be less than or equal to. Um, nums of low and then this is in the case for our right in our rightmost area over here mm -hmm. or actually it's going to be nums of low is less than or equal to mid this is for our leftmost that makes sense over here not mid minus low because the reason being is that we are trying to figure out where the target is in particular if it's on the leftmost side it's going to be less than our middle variable right over here if <clears throat> if okay now then we need to for the left most if the uh, nums of low is less than or equal to the mid that means the target is going to be less than the nums of mid And the target is going to be less than or equal. Hmm. It's going to be greater than or equal to the nums of low. Already. And low is going to be. High is going to be mid minus one and else right over here in this case if it's not there then we're going to check the rightmost low it's going to be uh, mid plus one over here mm -hmm. and now we will go for the right most over here now 
this would be the relationship of if <clears throat> nums pi will be greater than greater than or equal to the nums of mid in this case. And then we will have our edge cases if the target is going to be greater than nums of mid and target is going to be uh, less than or equal to the nums of high because high is the rightmost element that we have, then uh, low is going to be equal to mid plus one and else then we're gonna search the leftmost and high is gonna be equal to mid minus one over here. All right, and I think this should check out from what we have. here so we first initialize the variables already here then we have a while loop already set in place that uh, where our middle variable is already uh, declared and then we check accordingly if the mid is equal to our target then we return a mid for our left if the leftmost we have to discern between the relationship of low and the middle and then we have our edge case to determine if the target is below the mid and the target must be low because we were searching for the leftmost then the middle must be shifted over well the high must be shifted over and we then need to figure out in particular of where the target's going to be we shift where the high is and we sh else not the condition move low up and then we do the same thing for the uh for the blow it's just this is focusing on the right side this is focusing on the left this will focus on the middle so i think this should be good let's just double check to see if everything's already lined up mm -hmm. and we return one if it's not nums not in our nums array all right, it passes all the test cases and submit. There we go. And just to give a rundown on the space and time complexity that we have for our given solution, uh, I will just further expand upon this. In fact, I'm just gonna go back and then, let me just clean this up so that way you folks can actually see what I'm talking about right over here. Just gonna clean this up. There we go. So this is our pseudocode at the top, and this is our solution. So to give a breakdown of our space and time complexity, our time and complexity, given the fact that we're doing everything in binary search, is going to be O log of n, and then our time complexity, given the fact we're not using a data structure um, already set in place, our space complexity is going to be O of uh, it's going to be O of one linear, given the fact we're not storing anything from our arrays, and the O log of n, um, in particular, is our time as requested from the problem because we've already reduced the um, search space already from just focusing on the middle uh, already, and we're not storing anything and calling upon a data structure. So yeah, this was uh, search in a rotated sorted array. Thank you again for taking time to watch this. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. And as always, cheers, take care, have a good day, bye-bye.